to my YouTube channel. My name is Rachel Rabo. I'm a Microsoft Power Platform developer. And today I'm going to be showing you how to create a custom table in Microsoft Dataverse and also how to understand the data types when creating your table. So the first thing I'm going to do is to go to make.powerapps.com. Then I'm going to go to tables at the left side of my screen. Then click on new table, then also click on new table. So the name of the table I'm trying to create right now is called event attendance. So after writing the name of the table, which is a display name, I'm going to go ahead to primary column and change it from name to registrant's name. So this is actually your primary column and it cannot be changed. It's, it's, it's actually your primary column for your table and it cannot be changed after creating the table. So I think it's more, you can actually change it from being required to optional when you are filling in your information in your table. So I advise you to change it from name that it was before to anything you want to use, any data you want to collect for your table. So the next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to go back to properties, click on enable in attachments and click on save. So I'm just going to wait for it to save. Okay, so. So the next thing we are going to see, we are going to see if you notice from, if I click on this place, you are going to see an already existing column that was created by our system. You have your status, version number, and event attendance. This is actually your key, your primary key. I'm just going to click on it and show you. This is the primary key for your table, especially when you want to, it's actually a unique identifier. Especially maybe you want to create a relationship. You want to create data relationship between your table, maybe between this table and another table. You can actually use this to create a relationship to that table. And they are when you add the data to your when you add the data to your table, like maybe for instance, I want to add for let's try this and see. I want to add the data which of so you are going to see it's just created on its own. So you don't have to do anything about it. It's created for Rachel. For instance, you have where this helps you is that maybe you have um you actually have two Rachel on your data and they are totally different persons. You can easily search your events attendance. This is your primary key helps you to differentiate between the two names in your table. And Another bit, another advice I'll give you, it's actually if you want to make it more accurate, I think it's better to actually create an alternate key in your table. So we're just going to go ahead with creating columns for our table. So I'm going to click on this plus, which is new column, and I'm going to add registrants. Registrant email, email address. So this is optional. Like you can give a description of what this column is all about. You can give a description. And the next thing to do is to go to data type where you have your single line of text. You have your text, your number, your date and time. You have your lookup, currency, choice, auto number and file. So we're going to be using few of these data type for this table. But for instance, where you have this registrant email address, the best thing to do is to click on text, which is single line of text, and change the format from text to email. So with this format you're actually using, it allows you to actually add an email into your column when filling your column. 
I think which is actually more preferable than actually using just text. So I'm going to change that, scroll down, and always make sure that this is already clicked on, meaning that your column is searchable when you are looking for it. Maybe you are trying to use it to build an application in Power Apps. We also have required. So you have the option of either making it business required where without filling this column, there will be an error message and you can also leave it optional. So I'm going to click on save. So now if I'm going to add more data to this app, I'm going to click on new column, which is the plus sign. Then we're going to add gender. Then I'm going to change this data type from single line of text to choice. To choice. So we have two options for choice. We have the we have choice and yes and no option. So for the yes and no option, you get to choose between two options. You cannot add an extra like where you have this two, you have this two right here. You cannot add something extra to this. You can change what this text means here and add something else. But for when you actually do this, when you go for choice and choose choice, you have the option of actually creating a new choice. And there's one thing to notice, you can see psych with global choice. So when you create a global choice, it makes your it makes your choice searchable, like you can use it for any table. After creating your choice, you can actually use it for any table. But when you create a local choice, when you click on no and actually create a local choice, it's actually only available for this table. So I'm just going to leave it on for global choice then click on create new choice. I think I already have, okay. Create new choice, then just go with this. You can either change this or you can leave it, but I'm just going to change it to the value of one, add choice. You see, we have an option here. I'm just going to change that to two, and you can also add new choice, like you can add more options to this, which was different from the yes and no choice. So I'm going to click on save. So after clicking on save, the next thing I'm going to do, I have to search for that choice I just created. So I'm just going to search for it, which is gender, and click on it. So, and you also have the option of actually choosing a default choice. Do you want to choose male? Do you want to choose female? Like you have an option of choosing a default choice, but we are going to be using none of them. And the user gets to choose any of their choice. Okay, so we're going to add more data to this app. Okay, so we are going to understand a bit on the data type. So I'm going to explain a bit a summary of the data types and if you can see on my screen you can see this you can see this document i'm going to drop it on the description of this video so that you can go through you can understand better on when to use the different types of when to use the different types of the different column types and also what is calculated and roll up columns so i'm just going to go back there and we're going to understand that Single line of text is when you want to, single line of text actually has a minimum of 100 characters and maximum of 4,000 characters. So when you are planning to use more words, maybe you are trying to add more information into that particular column, it's actually more advised to go for multiple line of text where you have a minimum of 150 characters and a maximum of millions of characters, yeah. So, then this place you are actually seeing your rich text. That is when you get to use markup languages. Then the email, these are all formats. The email you are seeing here is actually what we used before. Like you want your text in a email format. We also have a phone number. You want to add for 
maybe are trying to use it in power apps when if you do not feel no feel a number the column is not going to when you're trying to enter data into the column it's not going to work so the format is phone number we have ticket symbols and we also have url that is when you want to add links into your column so that's all for single line of text then we also have for number where you have your whole number your decimal your floats language code duration and also time zone so i would really advise you to go through if you want to learn more about data types I advise you to go through that document on microsoft microsoft documents and read more on it to know when to use it so we're going to still go further on where you have your date and time you have your data and time you get to use you get to use your data like your data the data type of your column is actually in data and time or in dates only like you get to choose from your calendar today is when you are filling in your data you get to fill in maybe 14th of march 29th of may like that and then one other thing too to notice here we have behaviors is this actually a is this simple is this a calculated column where you get to calculated column maybe you are trying to and there's one good thing too when you do all of this like you are trying to interact with your data directly from the table especially when you are trying to maybe you are trying to work on an application with your table maybe you are trying to build an application in data in power apps you are trying to build an application with canvas app with modern driven app now you are actually working on it that wherever you call on your table is actually still having that particular that particular thing you have done there it actually still has it so for we have your calculated column maybe you are saying that okay there are some columns i have a i spent i have a profit of i i i sold maybe i sold them um, 1000 euro and I'm trying to understand how how much loss I had for that month. And you have two different columns for those different data you are trying to collect. So you can actually add this is the column that you are trying to like take the total. Maybe this is the total column. You can actually create a, create a, a calculated column for it where you get to do your addition or your subtraction on those particular columns. And you also have your roll up so another thing to to notice when you click on advanced option you have your schema name which is the name of your column the schema name of your column and you have your okay this is actually because we are using date and time that is why it's actually showing time zone adjustments and this imputes method editor is maybe the keyboard language you actually want so you have your octo active disabled and inactive so for the default mode is actually octo then if you go on on general we have our enable column security maybe you want if you click on this particular eye here you get to see more information whether the data in the column is secured at a higher level than the table then for enable auditing you have to you want to track changes in data versus data for security but there's also one thing to which is that you have to enable it to on your organization and also on your table before it can actually work on your before it can actually work on your column then where you have sortable you want it to work for an interactive experience dashboard all these are explained on that documentation and you also have four dashboards so you can see so we're just going to go ahead to enter for this date going to enter for this column date so we're going to date and time date only then click on save so we're going to look for more data we can add to this so let's go for address i'm going to be using single line of text 
Then click on save. Then I'm going to be going for, okay, I think I should go for age. Going to be using number. Our data type is going to be number. Making our format whole number. So none, then we'll click on save. Okay, I think there are also some other data types we have not looked at. We have a lookup data type where you are trying to create a relationship between two tables. Like you are trying to, you, it's actually more advisable to actually create relationship between tables in order not to get duplicate data. Like for instance, you are a marketer or a salesperson and you actually have like a, you actually have for expenses, you have for expenses that was made, you also have for, um, you have for expenses made. Okay, I think we should actually give a difference. Okay, yeah, yes, you are a salesperson and you have for, like you have an, uh, a purchase table, you have for customers table. Instead of adding those data, you need to collect into one particular table. You can actually create different tables. You can actually create different tables and create a relationship between those tables. So where lookup column comes in is that with lookup column, they have different ways in creating your want many relationship and many to one relationship. With lookup column, if you click on lookup column, you get to create like a many to one relationship with a table. So if you can see when you get to related table, then you can see different tables here yeah, where you can connect to. So another thing too, we also have in lookup, we also have customers where you get to connect to customer or record table. Then for our currency data type, maybe you're trying to use like a, you're trying to add your data in currency, maybe in Naira, in Euro, or also in dollar, instead of using whole numbers. Then for your auto number, for your auto number, for instance, you are a business and you're trying to give your customers like an ID. A, you're trying to give them an ID. So you can easily just name your ID. And you can say you have a minimum number of, of digits where you can change it and you can see the difference here in the preview. And you can also change your seed value. See, so you can change your seed value and you have to give this a display name. Okay, let's just add this to it. Registrant ID and click on save. So we're going to click on the plus sign, then also go back to data types. So then you also have for file. File, you have file and image where you get to, you can use this, you can add images to your column in JPEGs, GIF, PNG, and actually you have so many options to add, but you have a maximum MB and minimum MB you get to add to that particular column. Then you also have your formula. This is where you use your power FS function. And it's for now, it's actually on preview and you can only use it on Canvas um, Dataverse on Dataverse, Microsoft Teams Dataverse, yeah. So thank you very much and don't forget to watch, don't forget to subscribe and like this video. See you in my next video.